it's a great pleasure to be asked to uh, highlight Self-Care Week, which um, taps in, if you like, to some highly topical um, themes. Um, first, emphasizing the benefits uh, and importance of self-care to the public, in particular in reducing the inappropriate use of antibiotics, which is certainly a current theme at the moment. Uh, and secondly, highlighting the Department of Health's winter campaign and the work being done to raise awareness uh, of antimicrobial resistance, which I'll touch on in a moment. Now, these are all messages aimed at professionals and the public in equal measure, because both constituencies are, um, are, play a vital role in limiting the effects of ill health um, caused by, by common conditions during winter. Now, the first thing that I'm here to do is to highlight the Department of Health's winter actions, because, as we all know, cold, particularly severe cold, kills people. On average, there are 24,000 excess winter deaths in England and Wales every year, many of which are preventable. And in the international stakes, um, England and Wales don't look particularly uh, good in terms of preventable deaths. With winter fast approaching, the cold weather plan for England has been published by Public Health England in collaboration with the department, NHS England and the local government association. And the plan aims to tackle um, major avoidable effects on, on health during periods of severe cold. Uh, preparing for them, alerting people to them, preventing them. Um, and it does that by recommending a series of actions. Actions for the NHS, for local authorities, social care and other public health agencies. Uh, for actions for professionals and for individuals. Now, interestingly, preliminary uh, data by the London School of Hygiene and Top Tropical Medicine has shown that deaths start to occur at higher temperatures than previously thought, at 5 to 8 degrees centigrade, rather than what you might have expected, which was freezing or below. So prevention is critical before the temperature starts to, to drop. And the emphasis in this year's plan is therefore on long-term planning and preparedness for winter action. And as the cold weather sets in, everyone needs to play their part in identifying people who are, who are vulnerable in, in our communities. Now, the cold weather plan recognizes another vital measure in preventing with winter deaths, and that's the flu vaccination campaign. We're urging people who are um, offered the flu vaccine, including those who are most at risk, and all two and three year olds, um, as of 1st of September, to protect themselves from flu this winter by ensuring they get vaccinated. Um, for most healthy people, flu is um, just an unpleasant thing that uh, happens. It's uh, usually self-limiting. But older people, the very young, pregnant women, those with underlying disease, particularly chronic respiratory or cardiac uh, disease, or those who are immunosuppressed, um, are at particular risk of severe illness, sometimes hospitalization, um, and even death if they catch flu. So every year we, we do our best to encourage um, all people at risk of serious illness to get vaccinated. We're doing the same again this year. And this year, for the first time, healthy two and three year olds are being offered a nasal spray, um, to, a nasal spray vaccine to protect against flu. Um, and that marks the, the first step in an extension to the National Flu Vaccination Program, which will eventually cover older children. Um, and extending the program in this way, as, you, as I don't need to tell you, will not only provide um, those people, those individuals with, with important protection, but they're, um, as they're more likely to transmit the virus to other more vulnerable groups, um, it will also offer, offer protection to the, the people they're in close contact with. So we hope that this will substantially reduce uh, illness. Also part of the cold weather plan 
Public Health England have published Keep Warm, Keep Well, which is a booklet that aims to help people maintain good health and inform them of the financial help that, that uh, is available to them. The department has contributed um, health advice to a Get Ready for Winter website. That's a one-stop shop for advice over the winter period, hosted by the Met Office, actually. And again, the emphasis is on the importance of prevention. We also know the dangers of growing antibiotic resistance, and this issue was raised by the Chief Medical Officer in her annual report, which was published in March, as many of you will remember, uh, and her report outlined the scale of this issue, the potential scale of the issue particularly, and its implications for public health and society. It's a gl growing global health a problem. The UK five-year AMR strategy, which we published in September, includes a response to the challenges set out in the CMO's report. We need to take action at a national level, but also an international level as well. And one thing we are committed to doing is working with our European counterparts, supporting European Antibiotic Awareness Day. Many antibiotics are prescribed and used inappropriately for viral infections such as winter colds and flu, which not only don't respond to uh, antibiotics, but they could contribute to increasing antimicrobial resistance. So if we're to slow down the development of antibiotic resistance, we must use antibiotics in the right way. Uh, indeed, it's quite startling, I noticed, that your research suggests that almost half of people, 45% of people, believe they can treat the symptoms of uh, colds and flu with antibiotics, and that slightly more, 48%, admit to visiting their GP with an expectation of being prescribed antibiotics. So I'm really pleased that the PAGB and Pharmacy Voice have come together to launch their Treat Yourself Better Without Antibiotics uh, campaign today. And let me say that the Department of Health absolutely supports your central aim of encouraging people to treat winter ailments like uh, colds and flu, to treat them themselves rather than going to their cheap GP and asking for antibiotics. Community pharmacies, the message I always try and beat the drum about, are there as the first port of call for professional advice and treatment for things like this. Um, I know a lot of activity is being planned to help educate people so that they know, first of all, they know what symptoms to expect um, and how long they will last for and what they can do to treat themselves and <coughs> when they should seek medical uh, advice and when they needn't. Um, so I'm encouraging the NHS, for local authorities, um, directors of public health, to support this campaign. And um, as we know, European Antibiotic Awareness Day is next Monday, 18th of November. Um, that Awareness Day was initiated in 2008 by the European Centre for Disease Prevention Control, and it's, um, it is uh, an annual event. It's a campaign promoted across Europe to raise awareness on the proper use of antibiotics. Uh, and it's linked as well to initiatives, similar initiatives in America, Canada, and Australia. Uh, and this year, we're again providing electronic educational materials. So if you like those, do access them. They're on the uh, Department of Health website. Leaflets, posters, um, quizzes, even. Uh, and the website, of course, can be accessed very easily by, by anybody. We're continuing the promotion of some of the existing tools that are out there, which I think are very good. For example, Target for GPs and the Start Smart Then Focus um, initiative for secondary care. And we've also involved more community pharmacists this year. With your help, thank you. Um, we've asked local authorities and directors of public health to encourage local health and well-being boards to support uh, the Awareness Day, and if possible, schools and colleges and community groups. And we've secured, as well, greater involvement of our veterinary colleagues to reflect the One Health theme of the antimicrobial uh, resistance strategy. 
So that should span humans, the environment, and uh, the animal world. Supporting the inappropriate use of antibiotics um, and raising awareness about inappropriate use is what I, I should have said, um, <coughs> is a really important part of the self-care agenda. And I hope that this message in particular can be um, put out there, there this winter. At the recent, as the recent PAGB research shows, one reason why patients consult their doctor is that they often expect colds to last for less than a week. Whereas actually, as we all know, they can last uh, um, for around 10 days or even sometimes longer. And it's the healthcare professionals in the community who can help avoid unnecessary consultations and reassure the public, really, by explaining um, simple things like, like that, and that antibiotics are not effective, um, in case they, they were wondering. So the link between self-care week and European antibiotic resistance, uh, uh, antibiotic awareness day, um, will help to ensure that consumers are getting consistent advice. I'd really like, finally, to thank all of you, particularly GOPA, for, for inviting me to speak at this event. Thank you to the PAGB and Pharmacy Voice for working with us on all of this. And um, I would just encourage the continued active collaboration, which is what it is, between our organizations over the months ahead. And I hope Self-Care Week is a great success. Thank you very much.